Take your Bibles this morning and turn to Hebrews chapter 11, if you will. We'll be looking at verses 20 through 22. Let's all stand together for the reading of God's Word. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. I'm preaching a sermon series through the book of Hebrews, and we're looking at the Hall of Fame. And in this Hall of Fame are the heroes of the faith. And so today we're looking at Isaac, Israel, who's also formerly known as Jacob and Joseph, the heroes of the faith. So I hope you're taking notes today. I always encourage y'all to do that. But if you're taking notes, write this down for number one. Our faith should be modeled after our hero of the faith, Isaac, who blessed his sons concerning things to come. So when we look at Isaac, we see how he was a hero of the faith, which is not mentioned here. But it took great faith for him to do what God wanted him to do, didn't it? You know, God had already told Isaac, that he was going to be the father of many people and a great nation later on. So Isaac knew, and also his daddy Abraham knew, that when they went up to the mountain to sacrifice, that God was going to provide that ram. As Abraham told his servants, uh, we'll be back. And they both knew, we'll be back. And the scriptures even say in the New Testament that even if God had to raise Isaac from the dead, that he had to live because God made the promise that he would live and be the father of many people and many nations. So it took great faith for Isaac and his daddy Abraham to go through with that skit is all it was. A skit to show that everything that they're doing here with this Acting out this sacrifice on the mountain was symbolic, see. A symbolic skit of what was to come with the Messiah. That's why Jesus told the unbelieving Jews, you say Abraham is your father, but Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And it says in Scripture, as we looked at last week, that Abraham knew that Jesus would be that sacrifice. They didn't know his name, but they knew because God told them that there would be a coming Messiah, God in the flesh who would be the sacrifice for our sins. And those who were believing Jews, those who were truly born again in the Old Testament, they believed in that coming Messiah. They knew they were saved by grace and not by work. So that was a great act of faith that Abraham and Isaac did. And that's why Isaac is considered one of our heroes of the faith. As well as the fact that when he was dying, he blessed his sons. And he blessed them in different ways, didn't he? So there is the blessing in Genesis 27, verse 29, where Isaac tells his sons, let people serve you, and nations bow down to you. Now, he's speaking here specifically to his son Jacob. And so he knew God gave Isaac the, the knowledge and the wisdom of what was to come. And what would happen in his son's life, in Jacob's life? Let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you and blessed be those who bless you. And it, it continues, the blessing continues in Genesis 28, 3 and 4. May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you, that you may be an assembly of people and give you the blessing of Abraham to you and your descendants with you, that you may inherit the land in which you are a stranger, which God gave to Abraham. And then he gave his son Esau a different blessing. But before we look at that, I want you to understand, Jacob didn't live a perfect life, did he? 
We know that his name, Jacob, actually meant supplanter or deceiver. Imagine having that name. Everybody calling you deceiver. You're growing up and every person calls you deceiver. That's, what a name to give your child. Deceiver. And that name had to change, didn't it? God changed his name later when he received the Lord to Israel. And when we think of Israel today, we think of the nation, don't we? But he's the first one to receive that name, Israel. All of Israel was named after Jacob. And so we're going to look at that in a minute. But no one, you know, when I read this as a, as a child and I, and I saw how God made Jacob a hero of the faith and, and he blessed him like he did, I thought as a child, as a growing Christian, how could God use somebody like Jacob? And give Jacob that blessing. He was, he was such a liar. But folks, we've all lied, haven't we? We've all sinned. No one deserves the blessings of God nor the blessings of man. We deserve death and eternal hell for the many sins that we've committed in our lives. And it's only by our Lord Jesus Christ that we are saved. And I always want you to remember Ephesians 2, 8, 9. I say it a lot because I want you to remember a lot. By grace we are saved through faith, that not of ourselves, it's a gift from God, not by works so no man can boast. And so God made Jacob into Israel and made him worthy. And we can never earn God's blessings or favor, but Jesus earned God's favor for us by choosing to be that sacrifice the atoning sacrifice for all of our sins at the cross. So, think about old Jacob, the, the deceiver. He didn't deserve his father's blessing either. But see, I want you to know that God made it known to his father, Isaac, that God would use Jacob later. That Jacob would choose to wrestle with God. You know, Jesus was the greatest wrestler in the world. You know that? You know, kids watch Saturday Night Wrestling and all those guys do their wrestling and fighting and all that. But Jesus was the greatest wrestler. Him and Jacob had a wrestling match. And Jacob won that blessing from God really bad, didn't he? And so God gave him that blessing. So he changed his name to Israel, which means God fights. It also means triumphant with God. So the people of Israel that are true Messianic Jews that have been born again, they have fought with God. All of us did that when we lived our sinful lives and, and God reached us and we finally had to submit to him. Until we submitted to Jesus, we were fighting with God. And then when God reached us and we, we received him all because of his glory and his mercy and grace on us, his calling of us, his helping us understand and be enlightened by his truth, then we became triumphant with God. So if you're truly born again, every day you should be triumphant with God. Because you're letting Jesus live through you. You're letting Jesus minister through you and change lives and bless lives through you. But you know what God also revealed to Isaac? That Esau would never submit to him. And even though Esau... Was Isaac's favorite because he was the hunter that always brought him the good meat to eat? He wouldn't receive the Lord. And I want to stop there just a minute and, and say that parents should never play favorites with their kids. I remember when I was a kid and I was making the bed with my mom in the bedroom. And it was just me and her. And I said, hey, mom, I'm really your favorite, right? I was about maybe seven years old. And she goes, honey, I love you and your brother equally but in different ways. You know, so there should never be favorites in a family like that. And you know, just like people learn from their parents, you know, Israel did the same thing with his kids, didn't he? He played favorites with Joseph and it caused Joseph and his daddy and mother a lot of grief. Because see, when, when Joseph was gone, he didn't see for many years. Just like just like when Isaac played favorites. He didn't see Jacob. He didn't see Jacob for many, many, many years. And, and his mother never saw him again. His mother that influenced him to be that deceiver to his daddy never saw her son again until heaven. So 
The law of the harvest is true, isn't it? See, there are consequences for our sins that, that sometimes never get erased and have many, many consequences. So that's why it's so important that we do things God's way, that we don't suffer the consequences of sin on this earth and let Satan have a foothold in any way. But God needed Jacob to be the ancestor of Jesus. And those genes are important, you know that? Those genes that are passed down are important. So Jesus needed the genes, those biological genes of his daddy. Jacob, excuse me, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. So here's the blessing that God gave to Esau, very different than he gave to Israel. Behold, your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. So God's a giver of all good gifts, and even though Esau never received the Lord and became actually the father of the Edomites, who actually produced King Herod, he still received blessings from the Lord because every good gift is from the Lord. His daddy blessed him. But it was nothing like the blessing of his brother Israel because Israel was the father of Jesus, right? The ancestor of Jesus. So here's the application of verse 20 for y'all. Every Christian father should walk so close to the Lord that he's directed to speak authoritative, faith-filled blessings over each of his children throughout their lives. You know what? That's something that Christians today just don't practice, do they? Did your daddy ever stand over you and pray a blessing over you? Like Isaac did to his son, Israel. Did your mother ever pray a blessing over you? Folks, that should be happening every week and, and even every day of our children's lives. And if you have grandchildren, you should be praying blessings over your grandchildren like this. Speaking with the authority of Jesus Christ. That this is God's will for you. And God wants to bless you. God wants to use you in great ways. Of course, never say anything that, that is a prophecy of the future unless you're 100% sure it's from God. But there's enough in the Word of God that you can pray blessings over your children your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, they will always remember that. I, I've preached funerals before where I actually read what the family members wrote about the person, and, and they would write that, that, that they prayed over me, and they blessed me, and, and how much that meant to them. They'll never forget that, see? And that's important that we, we do that. And, of course, it's always got to be faith-filled. You know, you, you believe what you're praying about. But so many Christians do not pray blessings over anybody. It doesn't just have to be your family. It can be your friends, your neighbors, your enemies. But you pray with authority and you pray with faith. And you know what? God answers those prayers. God will change lives to those prayers. Now, if you haven't seen The Chosen in the movie theaters, you've missed a great blessing this week. I'm not sure how long it's going to be there, but... But we went and watched the, the final episodes of season three of The Chosen, uh, which, which was about the feeding of the 5,000 and Jesus walking on water and had Peter come out and walk on water. You talk about great special effects. That was so powerful. And Peter had just been through some rough times in his life. And so once Jesus reached down into the water and pulled Peter up when he was drowning because of his lack of faith, he got him back in the boat, and he just took Peter, and he hugged him and loved on him. And Peter began crying because he'd been angry at the Lord for not, not doing what he thought he should do. And, and so he, this, these are the words that Jesus said to Peter. I, I'm not saying they're the exact words, but this is how I remember them from the movie. He said, Peter, we must go through some very difficult things in our lives. So we'll be strengthened for what is to come. Come to me. I love you. I care about you. I will help you. I'll carry you and shepherd you through the difficult times. Just look to me and stay close to me. I will bless you. See, that's the kind of God that we serve. 
And when you go through tough times, you need to remind people that, that God is allowing that in order that you would be strengthened and brought closer to Him. And also remind them what I always tell you, God is not the arsonist. He's the fireman. God doesn't make these bad things happen. The Lord didn't make difficult things for Peter. The devil did, but God says, I call to me, come to me, I will intervene. I will make things better if you follow me. See, God will make things better for our church. We'll continue to reach more and more people for the Lord as long as we do things God's way. Not acting in fear, but acting in complete faith and praying with authority over what Satan could do that God would have the victory. Matthew 11, 28 through 30 are similar words that Jesus said in the word of God. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I love those words. Jesus is always there to help, isn't he? In John 16, 33, these things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. See, Satan, his, his greatest desire is to take away your peace and your joy, Christian. And you know what? In every church I've pastored, there have been people in those churches that Satan uses, and they don't even know Satan's using them, but Satan uses them to take away people's peace and people's joy. And most of the time, what they speak are untruths. But God says, you know what? Don't let them take away your peace. These things I've spoken to you that in me, not, not in the figures on the paper, not in what people say, but in Jesus, in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. There's a promise from God. As long as we live in this world, guess what? You will have tough times. It's a given. It's a fact. Been there, done that. We'll do it again. We'll walk through it again, but walk through it with Jesus. In the world, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That goes right along with Romans 8, 28, doesn't it? All things work together for good, not to everybody, but to those who love God, first love, Jesus Christ. And those who are called according to his purposes. Those who live every day in the will and the power of God. They're the ones that receive the great blessings and victories from God. After the difficult things happen, God makes sure of that. So always allow tough times to make you better rather than bitter. Because that's what Satan wants. He wants you to be bitter. I can't believe that preacher said that when he didn't preach. He's talking right about me. You know what? Maybe God was speaking to you. You were looking at me the whole message. I'm talking right to me. And I, was I was talking to everybody. God was speaking through me, talking to everybody. But you know what? Whatever it is you're dealing with, allow tough times to make you better. So if you have a guilty conscience, or there's something in your life you think you need to turn from, things you've done that you're ashamed of, we've all been there. We've all done that. So allow it to make you better. Repent of those things. Confess those things. Tell people you're sorry. Make restitution where you've hurt them. But allow those tough times to make you better rather than bitter. And folks, when you encounter somebody that's bitter, sometimes their heart and mind is closed. And you can't talk to them. Just pray for them. But I'll tell you what. I told my, my Sunday school class this morning. I said, you know what? There's times. There's times that, that I thought God would never break through a person. And I said something to them, and God melted their heart because God made them ready. I didn't think they'd ever be saved, but God made them ready. I said, okay, God, I'll say something again. Here goes. And they were so ready. I'm ready to receive Jesus right now. I'm nearly fainting. Number two, our faith should be modeled after our hero of the faith, Israel, formerly Jacob, who blessed his grandsons and worshiped continually. So we see that blessing where Israel blesses his grandsons Ephraim and Manasseh in Genesis 48, 16. 
He says, I bless the lads. Talking about both of them. He's blessing both his grandsons. Let my name be named upon them. And the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac. And let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And here's the application of that. All Christians should live a life of continual worship. And that, that's one thing it says there in the scriptures that, that Israel leaned on his staff and worshipped. I mean, that was his lifestyle. Whenever I preach on, during Thanksgiving time, I always say, don't, don't wait till Thanksgiving Day to thank God. You should be living a life of Thanksgiving every day, all day. And that's what Israel did. He grew in the Lord. He matured in the Lord. He became a hero of the faith. And he leaned on his staff and worshipped because he always worshipped. And so, you know, many times, most of the time, I hear Christians call God Father. Nothing wrong with that. Sometimes they pray Jesus or Yahweh. Nothing wrong with that. But you know what? God goes by many names. And you know what? God revealed to me this, this week in a dream. I had a dream that I went into a room and there were men praying. And in that, in that dream, they were, it seemed to me like they were talking to somebody on a cell phone with a speaker on. And, and as they were talking, they, they addressed the, the person as, as king. And I thought, wow, no. I'm not going in there and joining that group. You know, they just called him king and majesty. I only call Jesus king and majesty. I, I'm not referring to to any man that way. I, I won't call a Catholic priest father. I call him brother. Brother. Because the Bible says don't call any man father. Only that, that, that title belongs to God. You know, I won't, I won't call a king a king. Okay, because only Jesus is king. I'll call him leader. But then I, then I realize they're talking to Jesus. They're talking to God. They're calling God majesty. Because they're worshiping. They're worshiping the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. They're worshiping the majesty. And so that thrilled my heart then. And, and, and I began praying to Jesus as my majesty, my King. And see, you need to talk all through the day long to Jesus, just like He's your very best friend, like they were doing. I was thinking they were talking on a cell phone because they were talking so naturally to God as their friend. And that's exactly what Israel did. They See, Joseph, think about this. You know, Jacob was the deceiver, but he grew so much that he raised Joseph in such a wonderful way that Joseph became such a godly young man and received the Lord at an early age. The son of Rachel. Again, that was his favorite. It caused trouble. But still, he raised that son in a godly way. Now look at his brothers. That, you know, he must not have grown too much when they were around growing up. He must not have been too spiritually mature because they, they, didn't, they didn't know the Lord so much later. But you see, Joseph knew the Lord well. And they were used to Israel being a man who talked with God like a friend, who worshipped him continually. And bless their family and bless all people by his godly example, his words of faith as the Lord led him. So that should be us, shouldn't it, church? That we live a life of continual worship and bless our family and bless all people we know through our godly example. Jesus living through us with words of faith as the Lord leads us. And I want you to write this down for taking notes. True faith always produces a life of worship and much good fruit. And see, if you're truly born again and you're walking with Jesus every day, you will live that life of worship. You'll produce much good fruit. There will be no question in people's lives and minds that person is a Christian. Because why? I can see Jesus' light living through them, shining through them. There's no doubt about it. Number three, our faith should be modeled after our hero of the faith, Joseph, who encouraged the children of God about a God they love and God's providence. 
So let's look at that verse again in verse 22 about our hero of the faith, Joseph. Verse 22 says, By faith Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel. So, so God helped Joseph to look ahead, see ahead, and prophesy about them leaving Egypt. It wasn't time for them to leave yet, but they would leave Egypt and go to the land that he had heard about from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They would have their own land, the land of Israel. So he was encouraging them about that. That's God's providence. And you need to encourage others in church and outside of church about God's providence, about God having a plan for your life, a plan that he will bring about if you follow him. And then also he gave instructions concerning his bones. He told them, don't bury me here. Don't bury me in this land where they worship false gods. Bury me in my father's lands. The, the land that God promised. Bury me only in Israel. And when we see Moses going through the, the desert, wandering around the desert for 40 years, guess what they're doing? They're taking his corpse with them. The corpse of Joseph. In obedience to what Joseph had commanded to be buried in Israel. And then when they, as soon as they went over and they, they took over Jericho, guess what? They buried him. And you can still go to Israel today and see where they buried Joseph there as God had commanded them. So also something else we see about this is, is to share God's love with people. His agape love. And that, that's something else that Joseph did. All of his life he shared that agape love, even till his final breath, blessing those around him. So that, that should be something that we concentrate on, church. That should be something that we ask God to help us to do every day is watch and pray for opportunities to be a blessing to others and share with them some words from God. From his Bible, about the gospel, however God leads. But we should be blessing people like this every day. Encouraging, especially the children of God, about God's love and about his love living through us to other people. So I want to show you the many ways Joseph was like Jesus. You know, as we look at heroes of the faith in the Bible, we see things about their lives like Jacob being the deceiver and the liar. We see things about their lives that are not so good. And, and, you know, Joseph, he was a sinner like we are. You know, but, but some people grow in the Lord. Some people receive the Lord so early in their life and they become so spiritually mature even at a young age that God used them in powerful ways. And that's what I call my three dayers. I believe with the power of God they can go three days without making one sin or having a sinful thought. And I, I put him right along with, in the same lines as Daniel and Elijah and the Apostle John when he matured. But Joseph was one of my heroes of the faith. And look at all the different ways that he was like Jesus. He was the most beloved son. Jesus is the only begotten son, the beloved son of Father God. And Joseph was the favorite of his daddy, wasn't he? Israel. Number two, he obeyed the father's will. Not only did Joseph obey his daddy, Israel, but he also obeyed father God. And when he matured and, and knew God's will and ways, he would know if his daddy was offline and tell him to do something he shouldn't do. You know, you know when uh, Joseph received those words from God that, you know, your, your fame was going to bow down to you, Israel didn't like to hear those words either, did he? So he was out of the will of God. He should have been encouraging his son. Saying, well, that's, if that's what God wants to do, son, well, I guess we'll do that in the future. But he obeyed his father's will. He was also given visions from his father, from Father God. So as Joseph received those visions and those dreams from the Lord, he revealed them, didn't he? And Jesus also received visions from Father God. And shared them with others. Joseph left all to help his brothers. His daddy Israel said, go find, go find your brothers. You know, they've been gone too long. I don't know where they are. You know, I, I want to make sure that an animal hadn't killed them. You know, there's bears out there. So we, we go make sure your brothers are okay. And he, he left all. He, he could have been killed himself. But he, 
he left all to went to go find his brothers, make sure they were okay. And Jesus left everything in heaven to go help his brothers on earth to be saved and to be blessed and have abundant life. Number five, he despised and rejected. He was despised and rejected by his brothers. We know that Joseph was despised and rejected by his own physical brothers, and Jesus was rejected by his own physical brothers as well. Also, those that, that his disciples, he was rejected by them when they said, I don't know him. And they all went into hiding until after the resurrection. Number six, Joseph was mocked and ridiculed by his brothers, and so was Jesus. Mocked and ridiculed by his own physical brothers as well as, as many. Even when Peter said, I don't know that man. Leave me alone. Number seven, the ways of Joseph was like Jesus because his brothers plotted to kill him. Jesus' own religious teachers, those that should have been proclaiming God's word and doing God's will, they got him crucified. His own brothers rejected him until after the resurrection. They also got him crucified. All those that yelled Hosanna in the highest on Palm Sunday, they turned around and said, crucify him. They plotted to kill him, his own brothers. Number eight, he was placed in the earth. Joseph was put down in that pit by his brothers. Jesus was put into the earth as they rolled the stone in front of the tomb. Joseph was sold into slavery. And Jesus also was sold into slavery in a manner of speaking that he became one who was arrested and taken into captivity to be crucified. Number 10, Joseph was exalted by God. See, at the end, he became a great leader, didn't he? Joseph was one of the greatest leaders in Egypt. And after the resurrection, Jesus also was exalted by God. And then number 12, Joseph forgave, loved, and blessed his enemies. And so did Jesus. And he commands us to do the same. Jesus forgave, loved, and blessed those who yelled, crucify him. Even the soldier that nailed, put nails into his hands and feet, that same one said, this surely was the Son of God. Many believe he was born again after that. See, Jesus could have sucked them all into hell for what they did to him at the cross. But he knew that many of them would be saved. So Jacob was led by God to give Ephraim the second born, the blessing of the first born. God needed Ephraim to be the ancestor of Jesus and God needed Joseph also to be the ancestor of Jesus. And do you realize that most Christian parents today and really throughout history they want so bad for their kids and grandkids to be blessed financially. And they even pray, God, bless my kids and grandkids with, with a great job. That they'll make, make great money for their family. But do they ever pray for their spiritual wealth? Do they ever pray that their children and grandchildren will, will come to know the Lord Jesus and know Him well and serve Him faithfully? Not many Christian parents do that, do they? And that's a sad condition on our world, isn't it? Look at that. I, I love this. Write this down. The gift of faith is to believe what we do not see. That's the gift of faith. But the reward of faith is to finally see what we have been believing. Isn't that awesome? Amen. And if you continue and persevere and keep having faith and keep trusting God and keep believing God for that blessing, the reward of faith is to finally see what we've been believing. Thank you, God, that you've made it come to pass. What I prayed for. What you led me to pray for. And here's the application. Every Christian should become so spiritually mature that they encourage the children of God about a God they love and the blessed providence of God. So I encourage you, church, to bless those around you, to encourage them about God's love. And live it, shine it so beautifully that people are so blessed by it. And they have, they have encouragement. They have hope for the future as well. So I ask you this morning. How has God spoken to you today? None of us 
are the heroes of the faith that we need to be for our family, for our friends, for our neighbors, those we know, our enemies even. Because why? Well, we haven't had role models that did that for us, did we? We didn't have people come before us. Even Sunday school teachers don't do that as an example for others. And you know what? We want to, many times we want to go so far away from false religions that, that we don't want to go around saying, I bless you, my child. Because that's what those other religions do. They lay, lay their hands on people and say, I bless you, my child. I'm not going to do that because that's what they do. They did it in the Bible, folks. It's the authority of God living through you. And say that by the authority of Jesus Christ, I bless you. And I ask for God's blessings on you in this way. And start with the spiritual, that you'll grow to know Jesus better and better every day. You'll, you'll grow to know his word better and better every day as you study early in the morning when you first wake up. And we should all be living that Christ-like example for our family to see, shouldn't we? The word of God means something special to us. I pray the blessing over you that God will use you and fill you and live through you, minister through you to reach many, many people and draw them closer to Jesus. With the loss of salvation, I bless you that you will come to be that Christ-like example that others will follow. Allow the Lord Jesus to use you to be that kind of a blessing. That these heroes of the faith were as they blessed their children and grandchildren, everybody they knew. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the example of Isaac, Israel, and Joseph. And Lord, help us to live that godly, Christ-like life that people would see what we do and we would make disciples who will do that for their families as well and live that life of faith and life of worship and obedience. So God, everybody here who is in church, everybody who is listening online, God, I pray that you would help them right now to, to commit those things to you. God, as I was preaching, you spoke to their hearts, Jesus, by your spirit. You showed them ways they need to change, sins they need to give up by the power of your spirit to be broken from that bondage, to break free from that sinful bondage. God, whatever it is, that sinful habit, God, you can give them that power. And God, thank you for those heroes of the faith that we have here in our church that live that Christ-like life. God, bless them. But Lord, none of us, not one of us is, is enough like Jesus. So Lord, help us. Help us to go that, to that next level. Speak to every heart in Jesus' name. Amen.